Welcome back. In this video, we're going to explore the ratio of the areas of different types of polygons, and we're also going to investigate the ratios of the areas of triangles. Getting right into it, we might be asked to find the ratio of the area of the parallelogram to the area of the triangle. Well, the area of a parallelogram is base times height, where height is an altitude, and the formula for the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So if we're asked to find the ratio of the areas, we're talking a fraction here, and all we need to do is find those two areas and see what fraction that comes out to. So the, ratio, the area of our parallelogram, the base times the height, so we're looking at nine times 10, and the area of the triangle is one half of 12 times eight. And since we're working with ratios here and fractions, we can go ahead and reduce and simplify. Um, I could look at this as nine times 10 over six times eight. And the 9 and the 6 simplify because they both have a common factor of 3. So that's 3 to 2. And the 10 and the 8 can both simplify. They have a factor of 2. Um, and they simplify to 5 over 4. And our ratio of our areas, 3 times 5 is 15. And 2 times 4 is 8. No more common factors to simplify. The ratio of our areas is 15 to 8. And we could write that as 15 to 8 if we wanted to. Let's take a look at another type of problem. We have a diagram with three different triangles. And AB is 5 units and BC is 2 units. It's asked to find the ratio of triangles ABD, so the triangle on the right-hand side, and we're going to compare it to triangle CBD, the triangle on the left-hand side. So the area of triangle ABD is one-half base times height, um, but we don't have a height. All we have is the base, our height for ABD is some H. We don't know. So the ratio of those areas, one half five times H for ABD. And triangle CBD, well, that area is one half two times and then the height of that triangle. Well, as it turns out, the height of triangle ABD is the same as the height of triangle CBD. These two triangles have the same height. CB, if we just extended that base of two, well, there's our altitude. So our two triangles actually have the same height. And if they have the same height, height over height simplifies to one. The one halves simplify, and the ratio of our areas is five to two because everything else simplifies. So if we have two triangles with the same height, the ratio of the areas would be the ratio of their bases. What if a triangle is split into two triangles by a median? So we have our, our big triangle ABC, and we split it into two triangles, triangle on the left-hand side, triangle ABD, and triangle ACD on the right-hand side. Well, what do we know about the bases of these two triangles? Their bases are going to be the same because they're congruent. That's what a median does. It divides 
the opposite side into two congruent segments. Well, what about the heights of those two triangles? What do we know about the triangle on the left, ABD, and the triangle on the right, ACD? Just like in our previous example, those two triangles have the same height, and they also now have the same base. So in this example, we have base 1 is equal to base 2, and height 1 is equal to height 2. So when we calculate the areas of both, our bases, our heights, our one-halves, all simplify, and we're left with 1 over 1. So what happens if we split a triangle into two triangles with a median, a median AD? Well, it creates two triangles of equal area, and that totally makes sense. The median of a triangle divides the triangle into two triangles with equal areas, and that is a new theorem. And that should make sense to you, because we have two triangles with the same base, and we also have two triangles with the same height. Now let's take a look at similar triangles. Here we have two similar triangles. We have triangle SML on the left-hand side, small triangle, and triangle BIG, our larger triangle, and I'm telling you that they are similar. So, in fact, you can see that from the tick marks. All the angles are congruent each. The corresponding angles are congruent, so those two triangles are similar. And the ratio of the corresponding sides is 2 to 3, or 4 to 6. So, I don't know what ML is, and I don't know what IG is. I don't know how big my bases are, and I don't even know what my heights are. But since they're similar, and the ratio of the corresponding sides is going to be in the ratio of 2 to 3, then don't I know that my base of the small would be 2, and the height of my small would be 2? And the because the ratio of the base of the small triangle to the base of the big triangle has got to be in the ratio of 2 to 3. And the height of the small triangle to the height of the big triangle has got to be in the ratio of 2 to 3. Looking at this, calculating the areas, the one-halves simplify. And my areas, 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 3 is 9. So apparently, this is the ratio of the areas of those two triangles. And notice that 4 to 9 is the square of 2 to 3. Really, right, 2 times 2 is the equivalent of 2 squared. And 3 times 3 is 3 squared. So the ratio of the areas must be the square of the ratio of the sides, if the triangles are similar. And in fact, that works for any kind of similar figures. That works for any kind of similar figures, not just triangles. That the ratio of the areas of two similar figures is equal to the square of the ratio of the sides. So here's our theorem. If two figures are similar, then the ratio of their areas equals the square of the ratio of the corresponding segments or sides. In our case, we used a side and we used a height or an altitude. So we can look at this as the ratio of side 1 is to side 2. If we square it, that gives us the ratio of our areas. We saw that in our previous example. Well, this also works in reverse. 
if the figures are similar, and that's the big if here, you have to have similar figures, okay? If the figures are similar, the ratio of the sides of similar figures equals the square roots of the ratio of the areas. So if we have the areas, and they're similar, and we square root both of our areas, we can get the ratio of the sides. So that concludes our introduction to ratios of areas, and we'll get more practice with this when I see you in class.